Earlier today, this afternoon, I spoke to Senator Mike Lee about his sordid encounter with Chuck Schumer. Take a listen to this sad story. All right, folks, we welcome Senator Mike Lee of Utah, who is trying to do the Lord's work, nearly did the Lord's work, by extending Title 42 in a very important amendment to the omnibus bill. And I'm going to let uh, Mike Lee tell us the rest of the story. You had this, or so it looks, and then Chuck Schumer stepped in and twisted arms of Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin. Senator Mike Lee, you, you almost reached hero status. Tell us your story, which happened, what, an hour ago. Let us know. Larry, for eight glorious minutes on the U.S. Senate floor, <laughs> we had this amendment won. Uh, we, we had uh, uh, the votes necessary to pass an amendment to keep Title 42 alive. Title 42 authority is, of course, of vital importance to making sure that we have some semblance of control over a southern border with it set to expire. Uh, once it expires, if it expires, uh, it's going to be absolute pandemonium. Uh, much, much more so than it already is. So for eight glorious minutes, we had it won. And then all of a sudden, Chuck Schumer uh, pulled a couple of members off the floor, Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin, uh, who had voted for the bill, along with every Republican in the chamber. And that's what brought it to the point where it was ready to pass. So he extended the vote. It was supposed to last only 10 minutes. The other votes today had lasted only 10 minutes. And then they cut off the vote, as per our unanimous agreement, to do that all day. He twisted their arms. Who knows what he told them? What he promised them, what he threatened them with, they came back and changed their votes. That's an incredible story. So the amendment loses 50-47. But if you had those two votes, you would have won 49-48. And yes. probably, I mean, as, I mean, Title 42 extending, as you said, is very important because of the chaos at the border and President Biden doesn't care and there's no money to help the border in this uh, terrible omnibus bill. But... It would have been a poison pill over in the House, and maybe the, you know, Kevin McCarthy Republicans would take over January 3rd and give us a decent bill. So the stakes were very high here, weren't they? Yes, they were exceptionally high, which is why it was so disappointing, because it, it might have given us the last best hope for taking down this monstrosity, this $1.8 trillion monstrosity that's going to end up costing us an additional $2 trillion over the next decade, given the fact that we've now reset the spending levels uh, to a higher degree, and that's going to be a problem. And you see there's no money for border security in there, Larry. It's, it's actually worse than that. Uh, what money is in there for the, the Department of Homeland Security prohibits them from using that uh, uh, to improve border security. Now, there is border security funding in there, but it's not for this country. It's for Egypt and other countries in North Africa and in the Middle East. So it's great if you're in those countries, but that begs the question, Larry, why are we sending that money over there when our border is the one that needs the most work? It's not the U.S. taxpayer's job to pay for their border security there. We're supposed to be focused on here. My colleagues got that wrong today. Yeah, no, I'm sure uh, uh, hundreds of millions of Americans are concerned about the Tunisian border, which has gotten part of that $450 million. Um, Senator Lee, I mean, this is probably a futile question. Does anybody have any sense, any leaks, any cloakroom gossip, what Schumer gave to Kirsten Sinema and to Joe Manchin to reverse their votes on your amendment? What's the gossip? I Look, they're tight-lipped on the other side of the aisle. They, they, they operate like a well-oiled machine. They're like the Borg on Star Trek The Next Generation. Once they're assimilated, they can't get out. They think as a group, as a hive, as it were. So tried to figure that out, uh, didn't get any answers. But uh, the result is tragic. And I believed, still believe, that once that happened, once these senators who, who, who pretended to want to help this program, once it was revealed that they weren't really concerned about solving this problem. Republicans should have voted this bill down. Not a single Republican should have voted for this bill because it preserves a massive problem that's about to get a lot worse. I'm disappointed in my Republican colleagues especially. We expect this sort of thing out of Democrats. We don't expect Republicans to support them in doing it. I want to come back to that point in a second, but um, Manchin didn't get permitting for this, did he? I mean, he changed his vote at the no. last minute. He never got permitting. Remember? Never got it. I mean, he double-crossed Republicans on the Inflation Reduction Act. He said he was going to get permitting. 
Biden, Schumer, Pelosi all said he'd get a permitting bill and a pipeline permitting bill. He never got it. I mean, he really, it was the most, again, I would use this word, futile. I guess it's just a sign of the times. Anyway, Senator Lee, you know what? Some other amendments that did, didn't do as well as yours. But Senator Johnson uh, tried to strip out earmarks. His amendment was defeated. And then um, Senator uh, Rand Paul tried to reimpose the spending caps, which would have triggered automatic spending cuts. What can you tell us about those two votes? Because that's sound budget policy. Both of them wanted sound budget policy, and a lot of Republicans deserted them. No, that's exactly right. And that, that's why when you hear Republicans talk about fiscal responsibility, about fiscal conservatism. You need to look at how they actually vote, because it, there's no defense you can make uh, for opposing those amendments, especially if you're a Republican, because all they're doing is trying to restore some fiscal sanity to a country that is, you know, we're bringing in as a government of, uh, about $4 trillion a year and spending about $6 trillion a year. $2 trillion annual deficits are indefensible. They are unsustainable. And we can't do this anymore. So it's beyond my ability to understand why Republicans in particular would help defeat these things and then still propel the bill forward toward passage once the amendments failed. You know, inside that bill, by the way, there's almost $100 billion in higher corporate taxes. That has not gotten the publicity it deserves. But um, the Trump tax cuts, which provided immediate uh, bonus depreciation and expensing for the R&D tax credit and for other forms of investment, are stripped out because of this bill. And Republicans wind up voting for corporate tax hikes. You know, Senator Lee, just the last point here. I, I mean, I think Rand Paul put his finger on it. He was on our show a couple nights ago. He said GOP has lost any power of the purse. And he said the GOP has emasculated itself. This is not a good episode for the Republican Party, is it? No, not at all. And, and in fact, I'm glad you brought up the tax hikes in there, which are, are themselves problematic. And, and you're correct to point out that they're not getting the attention they deserve. One of the reasons that this sort of thing can happen and, and, and not get much attention in the process, and Republicans can still go through the motions and vote for it uh, 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 devastatingly, is because it's folded into a 4,155-page bill, one that was negotiated in secret by four or five members of Congress, held secret from the public until Tuesday morning, Larry. I, there's not a human alive who can digest 4,155 pages of legislative appropriations text in that short a period of time. It's one of the reasons why this should never happen. Republicans, in particular, who do this, uh, should be asked to never, ever do it again. We yeah. will self-destruct as a party if this ever happens again. Yeah, afraid you're right. Afraid you're right. Um, Senator Lee, thank you for your good works. Merry Christmas, sir.